Hi there, I'm Maud Barlow with the Council of Canadians. To truly look at system change, one of the things we have to look at is our relationship to nature. Uh, in our society, particularly Western society or modern society, we see nature as an extension of our property rights and we see it as ours to do with as we wish. Um, to plunder it to, or take care of it sometimes, but it's our whim. Um, it's certainly for our convenience and profit. And so in looking at true and deep change, a lot of us are looking at the whole concept of understanding the need to have a body of law and a recognition of the rights of nature itself outside of nature's usefulness to us. In the current system of economic globalization, free trade and so on, this notion of unlimited growth, we have plundered nature and we have done great damage, which I know um, people watching this already know, to our water, to our old growth forest, to the air and so on. And this cannot continue, it's simply not sustainable. How we get from here to where we need to go, I do believe means deeply changing the system, our economic system, and really challenging economic globalization and the notion of unlimited growth. But one of the ways to do that is to understand the limits to the resources, the natural resources that have produced that and have made all that possible. I mean, you can talk green economy all you want, and a lot of uh, senior politicians and people at the UN and the World Bank are, but for a lot of them, they don't mean it in the way that some of us originally meant it. They mean it in the way that well, we can continue with unlimited growth and we can continue to make more stuff and have a growing, so-called growing economy, but we'll just change the technology and make it a little greener. Oh, and let's make some money on that. And that is not the essence of protecting nature. The notion of protecting nature, the rights of nature, is literally a body of law that would recognize that outside of its usefulness and used to us, there are natural systems, natural laws that need protection and, and, and those laws must be obeyed because they give us all life. A lot of this came together coming out of a summit after the uh, failed Copenhagen uh, climate summit um, in 2009, December 2009, so April 2010 we met in Cochabamba, Bolivia where President Evo Morales had invited the climate justice movement to come and try to restart some kind of talks out of those failed uh, negotiations. And out of them came this universal declaration on the rights of Mother Earth. And it's a very exciting living document that basically outlines in a similar way to the um, United Nations Declaration on the Rights uh, of Human Rights, the rights of the, of the Earth and different parts of the Earth. And we are really hoping that one day this will be seen as a, a, a living document that moves alongside, stands alongside um, the a Universal Declaration on Human Rights as the two founding um, visions, if you will, uh, of, our, of our time. A very important companion piece to our rights is the rights of others and including other species. Um, this is very important for us to be taking into the next set of meetings on climate, into, into meetings, uh, uh, you know, the Rio summit and so on, and all the different places that we're going because we need to challenge the notion of this green economy as it's being articulated. What many people are now talking about is placing a price on nature, um, make, bringing all of nature into the market system, and that's going to solve everything. So you put a, a price on water, or you actually convert water licenses to water markets, um, they've done this, for instance, in Chile, and they now have public auctions where they auction the actual water and big mining companies from Canada and the U.S. come in and they actually compete. And, of course, they've got more money, so they take uh, water that is needed by indigenous communities, small farmers, municipalities, and so on, because they can afford it. This is the marketization of water. It's exactly what we've done with carbon trading with air, which is just trading of pollution, of course. Um, but now they're trying to put an, a, a dollar figure on all of nature and in fact the United Nations Environment Program has just finished an assessment and they say that nature is worth 72 trillion dollars and I don't mean to smile but I don't know how you come up with a figure like that. I'm sure there are ways that they could explain they did it. What makes me nervous and I understand the thinking behind it and the thinking behind it is is if you can in a world that only the market matters and only the dollar matters or whatever your currency you have to make you have to prove that nature has value. So if you're going to buy into that, then you have to bring everything with it. And therefore, if you can prove this forest is worth something or this watershed is worth something, giving back 
to the economy, then it won't be destroyed. What makes me nervous about it is that then that, na that place, place of nature, that watershed, that forest has to compete against a competing a bid for it. When some company can come along and say, I can make more money from cutting that forest down than you can prove that it makes by standing there. I think there are, are we, we must insist that the, the natural world be left out of this market system and be protected by law because it gives us life, it gives itself life, it gives other species life. Without it, none of us will live. We need to change our thinking and have a more, if I can say it, sacred relationship um, with nature than, than, than we in the modern, so-called modern world um, have had. So I, I think we need to reject this notion of the marketization of natural resources, what's called PES, the um, Payment for Environmental or Ecological Services. I think this is the wrong way for us to go and we need to counter as a movement um, the whole privatization of nature. Um, this is also um, a concept based on the commons and reclaiming the commons. The, in, uh, in different countries and different parts of the world, the commons was enclosed or destroyed in different ways. In Great Britain in the 1700s, uh, the no nobility allowed peasants to hunt and graze and fish on the land because they would have died if they didn't. They brought in enclosure laws and literally kicked them off. People died of famine. That's one of the reasons there was the great exodus to the, to the new world and so on. Um, now we talk about, in the last maybe 30 years of neoliberalism, the, the modern enclosure of the commons where everything that used to be considered to be collective property, um, particularly nature, particularly in the natural world, is now to be privatized and put on the open market for sale, trading, hoarding, buying and selling and so on. This is um, a, a, a terrible mistake and we need to return to the notion that there are certain uh, parts of our world and parts of our lives that should not be marketized, should never have been put in the market and must be reclaimed and brought back. That is not, we're not talking about a free-for-all, let me tell you and be very clear, we're talking about a fiercely protected, well-managed commons, protected by public trust law. Um, we have many good examples of this where, you know, a, a, a particular piece of nature, perhaps say, let's say groundwater, is protected with very clear basis of, of who, you know, a, a, who has access based on, you know, protection of nature, the equitable access by all and so on. So we can set those rules and we can make our, our human rules compatible with the rules of nature so that um, there is a, a living ecosystem, a living earth democracy here for all of us. So as we take this journey on system change and as we look toward alternatives to a fossil fuel future, we really need to challenge the current economic systems of uh, why I continue to be um, ever, ever, ever interested in trade agreements, ever concerned about these growing influence of corporations in trade agreements to be able to sue governments. Uh, more and more and more, this is happening in all the bilateral agreements. We're losing control, we're losing democratic control, and that means control over na over natural protection, protection of natural resources. So we need to challenge this system. And one of the ways to do that is to put in place a body of law that locks in the rights of na the natural world and other species and reminds us that we're just a species like any other. You remove water, you remove food, you remove clean air from us, and we will have the same, perhaps shorter lifespan than many other species. So I'm um, very excited about this system change uh, project, I'm very excited to be part of it, and just invite you to think about the thought that every now and then as a human species, we take an evolutionary step forward. And I think the recognition of the rights of Mother Earth, of nature, is one of those steps, and I hope we can walk it together. Thank you.